welcome back to MTDC and see my friends. As you can see, I'm with my buddy Ryan and Karen Engineering. We always appreciate you watching and Ryan's gonna educate us a bit more on the significance of Tool Connect and RFID, maybe even a little bit of the differences, right? To help us understand what's really going on. So Ryan, thank you so much for being a part of MTD. Thank you, Tony. I'm really happy to be here at the Morris Open House here in Elgin, Illinois. And what I have here is a demonstration unit showing our Tool Connect product. And what's new about the Tool Connect product now is that we've added a new capability. Uh, aside from the current capability of RFID, we now have a barcode application that is a lower cost way to utilize the Tool Connect product. So I'll just show you really quick how it all works. Sure. Uh, so what we have here is a, a dummy tool. It's not a real cutting tool. It's got a little RFID chip in it. And what we're able to do using our interface, of course, this would be connected to a CNC machine and our operator is going to load the tool. And what the main purpose of Tool Connect is to make loading tools faster, more efficient, and error free. And that's a really big part of why there's demand for this type of technology right now. And what we actually do is step the operator through the actual exact process that the customer has decided they want their operators to load their tools. And in our software, we'll literally step the operator through each step of the process. So obviously first, we're gonna load a tool. We've got the information about the tool. We have the tool ID number. If there's a unique assembly number for this tool, an offset, all the geometry data. We even are capturing tool life here as well. So all of this data will go into the CNC control and we'll just hit a button here to do that. And once we determine that everything looks correct, the data will be automatically sent to the CNC. So. Ryan, two things that stuck out to me in that part of the conversation was the importance of keeping that spindle running all the time because that's constantly gonna make us money, but even more so, operator error. How often do you think a machine is crashed due to operator error? Well, every day, every week, every month, and not per company, but across the board, across the world, it's happening all the time. And guys, I'm gonna share a story with you. I swear I'm not making this up. Quite literally, sat down with a guy yesterday who had one of his operators push a button, spindle smashed into his uh, plus two trunnion in the machine, lost $50,000 of the trunnion, lost the machine spindle, all could have probably been remedied with something like this. Now, how quickly would it pay itself off of saving one day of that? Of not this machine being down, but everything that was broken that went along with it. Absolutely, it happens all the time. And it, we get this call literally weekly from a customer who was interested in this technology, maybe thought it was a little too expensive, and then experienced something like that. Not to mention the time savings and a lot of the other data analysis that uh, comes along with capturing this data. Uh, for example, real quick, we're putting tool life in, as I just showed, out of a new tool. And now when I unload a tool, I'm actually gonna update any of the fields that changed while that tool was in the machine, such as tool life. So when this tool comes out of the machine, we've recorded now that we've used up 50% of the tool life for this tool. So if it goes back on the cart, or maybe somebody grabs it by accident, tries to reload it in the machine, we're gonna have the correct information on this tool. Maybe it didn't have any tool life left, it looked okay to the operator, but our system will catch that error and tell the operator not to load this tool. So it, it goes a little bit deeper even than simply getting data in correctly and quickly. Uh, there's a lot of other fail-safe steps to the, to the system. That is very clever, Ryan. I'm so happy you shared that with the audience. My question for you is, how come it's always hindsight 2020? You said you get calls all the time about it being too expensive and then now I need it. Right. If we could be more forward thinking and understanding that inevitably this is likely gonna happen and you're here to protect and support your customers and potential customers, we can sure save a lot of heartache, can't we? Absolutely, it, it, you know, the, everyone is trying so hard to, to be globally competitive and they're buying the right equipment and they're making the right parts, but Unfortunately, there just isn't enough skilled labor out there, and, and tools like this can really help you get better parts out the door more productively and more profitably, most, most importantly. And, and I'd like to show you one other step to this system 
that is new now uh, with our Tool Connect platform, which only previously was able to use RFID hardware, which is great. We believe in RFID. We think it's the best way to do what this product does. However, there is some cost with the hardware. And what we've introduced now is an RFID method using a barcode scanner, off-the-shelf barcode scanner, is able to interact with this system the same way that our RFID hardware does. So I can simply scan a tool. We now have the same data that was on the RFID chip actually lives on the 2D barcode, which is printed by the tool presetter. We scan it at the machine, the data, same data, comes into the machine and we're able to continue. The only difference really between these two pieces of technology in terms of utilization for the customer is that we're not able to write the data back to a barcode, right? A barcode is a barcode. RFID is a live memory chip that can accept new information. We think that's the best way to do it. Again, using the barcode, we can get the data in just as quickly and efficiently. It's just that's the end of the story with the barcode app. But again, still very effective and still a lot better than nothing. A lot better than nothing. I agree with those points exactly. Go for the one. If you don't want to do it, better than nothing. They both work in a very significant way, reducing those operator errors. Yep. Brian, thank you so much for sharing this. For the people out there right now, even though Karen is already quite famous, but they want to look you up, what's your website? How can they find you? Thank you, Tony. Uh, our website is www.karen, which is C-A-R-O-N-E-N-G.com. And for those of you out there, who might not be in the U.S. where Karen Engineering is based and you'd like to work with a product, one of Karen's products or this specific product, you can look up Bloom as well as they're your partners internationally, aren't they? Absolutely correct, Tony. Bloom represents Karen Engineering in all of our international markets. Perfect. There you have it, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. Ryan, you're always a pleasure. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you, Tony.